Hey guys, what is going on location? Still out here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and today we are gonna finish the Kuala Lumpur challenge. We are strolling along through the gorgeous KLCC Park, which is right at the base of the Patronus Twin Towers, which I feel like I have to show in these videos so you guys believe that I'm in Kuala Lumpur. But let's get down to the challenge. If you didn't, you might want to check out the last episode because half of the challenge takes place there. Is this for one, like one person? All right, sweet. <laughs> what the challenge is, is I need to find 10 things unique to Kuala Lumpur. And each thing has to have a letter to spell out Travel Lord. I was able to find five of the 10 letters in part one, and now we set out to find the other five. Before we go, give this video a like, please subscribe, and leave a comment if you have other ideas for places I could have gone or things I could have used. It is sunny and raining out at the same time. We have found another letter might not be a huge surprise that I came here to some who are familiar with Kuala Lumpur, but this is Jalan Alor. And that might not sound like it works with any letters, but in English this would be Alor Street. So I'm counting it for the A. What are these? These are like little pineapples. Nobody knows what that is. Uh, excuse me, what's this? Pineapple. Little ones? Yeah, the baby pineapple. Oh, that's right. How much? Uh, ten. Ten? Yeah. For bag? No. Got a bag of little pineapples. All right. Do you have another bag? Yeah. Oh, perfect. If you could find a food that started with L, that'd be great. Lamp. Uh, I don't think I want to eat any lamp. Actually, I know the Chinese yang, which means lamb. So I didn't uh, spell check that. Yes, brother. Do you have any food that starts with an L? Sorry? L? The letter L? No. <laughs> What's your favorite? This one. This one. Everything? That, that looks good. Let me get this one. One thing I'll never understand. Like, why do they think this is a good place to drive through? It's not a shortcut. I keep getting harder up ahead. So we got these tiny pineapples. Smaller than an apple, but larger than a grape. There's 13 in here for 10 ringgit. That's a that is a steal. Delicious. They're really good. One thing about this street is they're always just putting up umbrellas and then taking them down. I got my umbrella up still. But yeah, it's just like they know when it's gonna rain. I don't I don't know. It's 
saute. Uh, looks awesome. So this is the, this is chicken, and this is lamb, and this sauce. I don't know if this is gonna be spicy or not. Let's try lamb first. Move the tiger. A little bit sweet. Not spicy. Delicious. Let's see how this chicken is. The sauce. Very good. And uh, I guess you can dip your vegetables in it. Mm, good. Man, a good choice. So for the L, the L at the end of travel, the little L, I had a great idea. Why not check out Little India? Here we are. We've got some little bananas in Little India. But all the people seem to be normal sized. What's this? It's a sweet pan. Sweet pan. Sweet pan? It's an all sweet one. All herbs. Okay. How, mu how much is it? It's a one three ringgit. Three? Yeah, three ringgit. And you just eat it? Yeah. Normal? All right. Alright. It's good for you? Healthy? It, yes, it's good for your cough and cold. Oh, for cold? Yeah, yeah. Alright. Oh. Well, doing it. All right. Oh. Is that good? It's interesting. Well. It kind of tastes like soap. I don't always drink soda, but it kind of seems to be the situation right now. Oh, I got it. Oh. Let this guy through. Oh. Excuse me, what, what is this? This one here, why? It's for hair? Uh, Longer or darker or what? This hair goes, you hair come, hair long. Ah, okay. But for, but for women? Ah, ladies, gents use, baby use, no problem. Babies? Ah, use, all people use. Okay. This natural product, this cooking. Ah, oh, okay. Well, if you want to grow your hair, they got they got the answer out here. Oh, all the flowers coming from here. How long does it take to make one of these? One hour? Oh, wow, looks great. It takes an hour. So it looks like all the flowers are used to adorn these Hindu shrines. So that must have taken a couple hours of work to get all that done. The letter O was a little bit tricky. Had to think about this one because I didn't want to be cheap and say outdoor activities in a park, you know, or something like that. 
But I did find something. This is the old railway station. I'm not making that up. That's actually what it's called, I'll show you, but look at this beautiful architecture. Apparently, they still have trains going in and out of the old railway station, although it is not the main railway station in Kuala Lumpur, just the first one. And across the street, we've got another very nice looking building here. SKTM is what it says up there. Here's some proof that I didn't just stick an adjective in front. This is the old Kuala Lumpur railway station. That counts 4 and 0. Built in 1892. Let's see if we can get inside and take a look. Well, nothing that crazy. But you can see there are trains coming in and out. So looking around the station here, I am seeing that same logo everywhere from across the street. And yeah, I don't think that's an S at all. So uh, my bad. I don't think that was the S KTM across the street. I think that was the KTM that is appearing all over here. I did realize that the old railway station goes to a lot of maybe short distance places, the Batu Caves, Platform 3. I think that the building across the street must be originally part of this railway station. I want to ask somebody, but it's kind of a slow day. It has been confirmed by an employee. This was part of the old railway station. So the mystery is solved. The architecture matches. Uh, so he said that now this is just the office building for the railway station and it is closed for today. So can't get in there. Right in front of the Lot 10 shopping mall is what is called the Lot 10 Hutong. And as someone who lived in the Beijing Hutongs for five years, I thought it would be kind of cool to check this place out. Head down here. Oh, it's like a, a restaurant. Hey, yeah. Hi, good evening. Well, I'm sure no one expects me to speak Chinese, but I did do a video in Kuala Lumpur only in Chinese. <laughs> so if you want, check that video out. That's why we're not going to Chinatown in this video because I covered it in the last one. So this turns into an enormous food court. I don't know if it's just Chinese food or Malaysian Chinese food. It's all the way back here. Now the problem becomes finding food that isn't just Chinese, but also Malaysian. For example, we've got the uh, Hainan chicken rice. Hainan is a part of China. And then next to it, we have the Ipo curry soup. Ipo is a city in Malaysia, but it's not the city that we're in. And interestingly enough, all of these are written in English, except for uh, this one down here. Let's see. It is the home-cooked braised pigtail rice. But uh, it might 
find something else besides that. Might have found something here. This says that uh, this guy, Sung Ki, started this beef noodle shop right after World War II in Malaysia. So I guess that is Malaysian food. Let me give it a shot. Uh, what do you recommend? What's this one? Yeah, the noodles, the noodles are good. Okay. I've eaten them since I was a kid. Of course, right. the original shop, but it's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's Malaysian food? Uh, China food. China food? Yeah. All right, well, whatever, I'll get this. So we have wheat noodles, soybean paste, some vegetables, uh, and then we also, in this one, we have beef. Oh. Man, uh, beef balls. And they, the guy told me I had to have chili paste, so. I hope this doesn't kill me. Let's see how spicy it is. That is excellent. You can kind of understand why that's been around for 70 years. Uh, I wasn't given any instructions, so I don't know if I'm supposed to mix all this together. I think I will end up mixing it together a bit. Let me try these noodles and the soybean paste. Really good too. And the chili paste, not too spicy, but it gives it a little bit that extra flavor. Pour the rest on there. Nice. Well, I knew that V would be the hardest one to find, but I had a great idea, and I thought that would be the place to go for a great view and a sunset, which we're not gonna get. It is raining. I am kind of taking shelter under the monorail here. Not sure how we're gonna get to this place without me ruining all of my equipment. I found it. It's across the street at Banyan Tree Hotel. There's a bar on the top called Vertigo. And it's got a spectacular view of the city. I am sheltering in place for a second under this, under this tree. Got real just now. The uh, the tree over there wasn't cutting it anymore. Had to make a mad dash for this overpass. I think I can take this overpass to uh, Banyan Tree, and then we can see this amazing view from Vertigo. We made it across. It'll look presentable here. The elevator goes to the 58th floor, and you head up here. Where'd it go? We made it. It's raining. <laughs> you can get an idea of what the view would be if it was a clear day with a nice sunset. At the moment, no one's sitting outside. No one's even going outside. They actually opened this specially for me, the nice people here. This way is good? <laughs> All right. Well, here we are at the end of our journey and the end of the rooftop here. Thank you guys for joining me through all the problems, the bad weather, whatever. We did it. We accomplished the Kuala Lumpur challenge. If you enjoyed this, please give it a like, please subscribe, write a comment. If you didn't enjoy it, I wanna thank you for watching for this long. And either way, I hope to see you guys in the next episode.